and for Sanctifon. You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every time, tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Today's mass intention is a birthday intention of Marlene Meteor. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. I'd like to introduce a, a guest today, a guest clergy, uh, Deacon Jody Panagia, uh, who has been studying at Notre Dame Seminary for six years. He is a parishioner of St. Francis Xavier Church, and now tomorrow, next Saturday morning, he'll be ordained a priest of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. So let's welcome him. <laughs> delighted that he's here, delighted that he'll be able to serve preach and I don't have to do a homily. Hallelujah. And today, uh, as I mentioned before, as we begin to pray the original uh, Novena, which is on the nine days between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost, we'll pray that at the end of Mass. Well, let's come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, O Lord, so that what was promised by the sanctifying power of your word may everywhere be accomplished through the working of the gospel, and that all your adopted children may attain what the testimony of truth has foretold. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night, while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Gallio was for consul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews. If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear you the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrines and titles in your own law, see to it yourself. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized upon Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time. And after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. As such to me, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness, for the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God is the King of all the earth. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God is the King of all the earth. 
God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy. The Lord, amid the trumpet blast, sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God is King of all the earth. to suffer and to rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there are a lot of interesting things going on in our readings today, but there's one line that I find really interesting. It's a line whose backstory has a lot to teach us about our faith and the challenges we face as Catholic Christians now some 2,000 years after Jesus walked the earth in the flesh. And the line, which is from our first reading, is this. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, you see, for years and years, secular historians used this line to attack the Gospels. They said, well, we know all the proconsuls of Achaia during the days of the Roman Empire, and there was no Gallio. And for years and years, we as Catholic Christians had to hear this criticism and had a conscious decision to make. Were we still going to believe in the Gospels in spite of, and I'll put it in quotes, evidence that they're not true? Or, as some have done, were we going to cease to put our faith in the Gospels? Well, as usual, there's more to the story. You see, a secular archaeologist uncovered a Greek inscription that proved that a man named Gallio was indeed set up as proconsul of Achaia by the Roman Empire for a very short period of time. The archaeologists further validated that the event reported in our first reading had to have happened either in 51 or 52 AD, which is exactly the time frame that our tradition had placed it in. So the Gospels were once again vindicated, and we didn't hear a peep about it. And this has happened in countless of other cases. I don't know if you remember here and there was criticism. We don't have any proof that the Romans ever really crucified anybody. Well, there's all kinds of archaeological evidence that has been uncovered that absolutely the Romans crucified lots of people. Uh, and then there was the uh, issue of the uh, in John's Gospel talking about the Pool of Bethesda that it had five porticos. And there was criticism. Well, there's no buildings with five porticos anywhere in the Middle East. This couldn't be right. Well, they uncovered the Pool of Bethesda, and lo and behold, they found the structure that had the five porticos, just like John reported. Please hear the words of Miller Burroughs. He was a professor of archaeology at Yale University. This is what he has to say. On the whole, the archaeological work has unquestionably strengthened confidence in the reliability of the scriptural record. More than one archaeologist has found his respect for the Bible increased 
by the experience of excavation in Palestine, archaeology has, in many cases, refuted the views of modern critics. But we don't hear about this on the nightly news, do we? As the author to the letter of the Hebrews tells us, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so there will always be some reason, some rationale, or some, I'll put in quotes, evidence, supposed evidence, not to believe. However, the authors of the Gospels have made such a thing actually challenging for us because they have done something very peculiar in the world of what could be considered sacred writings. The authors of the Gospels repeatedly give us specifics as to names of people, names and details of places, as well as particular time frames. This is distinctive to the Gospels. This is because they wanted the hearers of the Gospels to know the details because they knew they were reporting on fantastic, amazing, and supernatural events. As St. Peter tells us directly in 2 Peter 1.16, now he's speaking of the apostles here, he says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So even though in every age Christians are presented with reasons not to believe, our faith is based on historical fact. Historical fact that has only been validated and supported by secular archaeology. Historical fact that has been transmitted to us from reliable, first-hand eyewitnesses. You and I need to keep this in mind when dealing with whatever is the latest and the supposed evidence to the contrary. Looking at our Lord, it is a historical fact that God himself really did that for us. For all members of the church, may the Holy Spirit inspire us as authentic living witnesses to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and all who are in positions of authority, may God empower them to speak the truth in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they experience God's healing and peace through his grace and the loving care of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the Lord renew and deepen our faith and lead us to greater joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month of May, when we remember Our Lady and pray to her in her special way, we pray today for all of the uh, loved ones who are listed on our Eastern Memorial Board. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for a pro-life culture in our country and for the protection of those who are trying to uh, defend life. Uh, we also pray for all of the, uh, the, those who died in the uh, school shooting, the horrific school shooting uh, in Texas and for their surviving families and loved ones. We bring all these intentions to our Lady and ask her to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may God hear and answer the prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your church, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this Easter time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with passionate joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form of my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter upon my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion and Father, Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Uh, this weekend, on Monday, we celebrate Memorial Day, and so this weekend, we will have all the Mass at the table uh, for anyone who would like to place pictures of memorabilia from deceased loved ones who died in service of the country. It can be placed there, and we'll honor them at the Mass this weekend. Uh, also, um, just to thank uh, Deacon Joey for being here, and uh, he has already uh, committed to come back and celebrate some masses for us. And he's Father Joey after next Saturday, uh, before he gets his assignment on July 1st, he'll be the, the new parochial vicar, assistant, associate pastor at St. Clement of Rome. So they're gaining our loss. But we're uh, very, very delighted to be with us today. Again, okay, after Mass, for those who are interested, we will pray day one of the Novena to the Holy Spirit. We got the Holy Spirit in baptism, strengthened in confirmation, but we can always start off the gifts of the Spirit. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God and you can we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the Lord.